Good morning. Um, wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about spirituality. Again, knowing who you are <clears throat> and what you can do in circumstances uh, when dealing with the courts. Uh, yesterday I had a phone call conversation with a pleasant young lady who told me in the middle of her court hearing that the alleged judge looked at her and the prosecutor and said, and I quote, uh, this is coming third-hand knowledge, by the way, looked at the prosecutor and said, although you may have more experience in this than I do, I'm going to have to side with the corporation on this or sympathize with the corporation. Now, what in that instance is he really telling the alleged defendant, the woman, is that he sides with a financial institution over her. And this was dealing with CPS, by the way. This really got me fired up. I've been studying and thinking about it and uh, how we're going to take, take this action against this young, incompetent, pompous, alleged judge. Now, his statement is so infuriating. I can't even hardly put it into words. It's just got me pissed off beyond all belief. Here's a woman fighting for her offspring, and the CPS is making allegations that have never been proven in a court of law. That's denial of due process. Not one of those CPS agents can testify with first-hand knowledge ever witnessing this young lady abuse, neglect, or otherwise endanger the life of her offspring. And yet this judge takes it upon himself, even when the prosecutor lends this woman assistance in providing the codes and the statutes that the CPS agents are actually in violation of, informing this young, pompous, arrogant judge of felony crimes that the CPS agents are guilty of, which then he now has a duty to report up the chain of command of the breach of trust and the violations that he's hearing from the attorney's mouth that correspond with the statutes, codes, rules, and regulations for which all corporations are bound by in order to do business. And he has the audacity to tell this woman and the prosecuting attorney that he's going to sympathize and, and show empathy for the corporation. Tell me how that makes sense. You tell me how that's justice. Because for me, what that looks like is just us and our crony of people who rob, steal, loot, lie, and pander from the American people. So I want to talk to you about affidavits. I see a lot of affidavits. I read them all the time. Uh, I, I am constantly seeing other people's style, how unique they are, what they took to put into them, why they chose to, to uh, put certain elements into their affidavits. Mm -hmm. First of all, an affidavit comes from firsthand knowledge under the sworn pains and penalties of perjury upon the eternal damnation of your soul. You are giving your word and your word is your bond. In an economy where there is no physical substance of value, there's no intrinsic value in the FRN note, okay? There is no value there, okay? It's a debt instrument. Because it's a debt instrument, your word literally is your bond. It's the value, provided that you follow through, okay? If you don't follow through with your word, what can in fact happen is you could be found to have caused someone else an injury for a breach of contract, right? Because everything is contract, ladies and gentlemen. The affidavits that I create are spiritual because nobody can rebut them. Absolutely none. And when we look at the First Amendment of the Constitution, you have the right to religion, freedom of press, the right to assemble, the right to protest, okay, right? We're looking at that aspect, religion. I hate the word because I, I look at it as spirituality, which is so much higher than a religion. 
Uh, a religion is more of a belief. Spirituality is knowing. Knowing the unseen because you can feel it. You can sense it. You can embrace it. You're one with it. Whole lot better than religion. Religions read some things on a page and choosing whether or not to believe in it. That's a religion. Spirituality is way different. There are people that are called to it. They can see it. They can feel your aura. They can feel your energy. We know things that others don't because we have the ability to be able to see them because we have six or seven senses that they're not telling you about. One of them is spirituality. Everybody knows you can taste, see, hear, feel, smell, right? But the other senses they're not telling you about is the innate eternal in sense that was built into you to sense evil, bad situations, bad people. Spirituality, ladies and gentlemen. My, my grandmother always told me, if you follow your heart, you always be led astray. But if you listen to your instinct, it's never wrong. Your heart leads you astray because of your compassion for people and things. But your instinct inside will always be 100% percent spot on and I, and I found that true in my life I found there were times my instinct was saying you need to leave and instead I chose to stay following my heart and I ended up in trouble for it I stopped doing that because I realized oh if I get the feeling within that I've got to go it's time to go I don't question that that's a higher calling that's something else greater than you telling you you're in a spot that you shouldn't be in you need to remove yourself from that so back to this judge who is so pompous and arrogant and ignores equity, ignores saying that what should be done shall be done, that this woman shall have her kids placed back in her arms and instead sides with the corporation for unjust enrichment and for profit because he's a new judge sitting on the bench. He's a new banker. He's got to prove himself. He's got to have a good standing record coming out the gate. It's like the Kentucky Derby for these new these new ministerial administrators, they got some shit to prove. If they want to make it to the big leagues and get to the top, they've got to be the best lion looting, thieving, pandering pieces of shit while making it look legitimate as they can. And make no mistake about it, that's exactly what they do. And you've been conditioned of the mind to believe that these people are noble, honorable, respect life, care for you and yours. And I'm here to tell you, You've been lied to. It's a gross misunderstanding. For their job is to fleece you and to find the ways to make it look half-fast legitimate. I have, in the recent weeks, been to a couple different courthouses, sat in a couple different courts, and watched these monkeys sit there and pass judgment against people they can't even prove had intent. The prosecutor is opening his mouth without first-hand knowledge and all but testifying to this guy on a bench. And nobody knows how to object. Not one person said, objection. Are you speaking with first-hand knowledge? Objection. I object to everything this guy says. He couldn't possibly have anything to bring to the table. Everything that he is saying to you right now is absolute hearsay. And he's reading it off of a piece of paper to add insult to injury. This is not first-hand knowledge and recollection of a situation that he had any knowledge of. Bring forth your injured party. Bring forth one man, one woman, one, one anybody that will testify under the pains and penalties of perjury for the eternal damnation of their soul. You bring one man or woman forward that is willing to do that. If they cannot, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call an estoppel. It is over. Absent a contract, there is nothing else to be debated. When I get pulled over, the whole series of questions that we've been innately sub subject to, we know they're coming when you get pulled over. License, registration, proof of insurance, where you're working, where you're headed, how you're doing. All these questions that they ask are so they can say, oh, well, you come from a known drug location and you're headed to a known drug location. So we believe that's reasonable suspicion enough to have you get out of your car so we can run our, our uh, dog through your car. You say no and they run the dog around the outside of the car anyway and the dog hits. The dog's wrong 80% of the time, but they never tell you the statistics on that. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you're a victim and you don't even realize it and you placate to the lying, looting, pandering thieves that steal your hard earnings from you. They offer nothing productive in society. There are not enough criminals throughout the world to justify the standing army standing on your soil today. So what do they do? We move through legislation. And we create all these statutes, codes, and provisions. So many that I once read a doctrine by a federal judge who had retired and said, you could spend five lifetimes trying to count the amount of statutes, codes, and provisions in city ordinances and still not count them all. Literally rolling out of the bed in the morning, you're probably committing three to five felonies and not even aware of it. So when we look at a society by nature that is genuinely good in most instances, and it doesn't give them the ability to justify their juxtaposition in growing a standing army on your soil, what's the next best thing you can do? Start to pass statute and code violations. Oh, he jaywalked. Didn't hurt anybody. Didn't kill anybody, but by golly, I need to reach in his pocket for what he just did. Where did they get the authority to do that? Who gave it to them? When did they get it? How did they get it? Why do they have it? Where did it come from? You see, when you start to ask questions, you will quickly see the truth. That they have no delegation of authority. That they don't have any reason to be doing what they're doing except for blatant theft and extortion. It can only be considered a trespass. Why? Because you have the unalienable right to move from point A to point B unencumbered and unimpeded. And I don't care if it's a tricycle, a bicycle, a moped, a, a motorcycle. I don't care if it's a truck, a, a, a plane. It makes no difference to me. Because the fact of the matter is, you have an unalienable right to travel, unimpeded, unencumbered, absent a victim, and absent a crime. Now, there are other instances. For example, they may stop you because your vehicle matches the description of somebody who has maybe possibly abducted an offspring or caused a, an injury to somebody along the way and your vehicle just so happens to match the same description and paint color. Okay, these are the forgivable offenses. But they pull you over, they quickly dis discern, oh, nope, oh, you're not our guy, great, have a nice day, you be safe out there, good luck catching your asshole. I'm all for them catching the bad guys, all for it. But in the meantime, what they do, in between bad guys, because there isn't enough to justify all these people being out there, is pull over innocent people and fleece them. So back to the judge acting dishonorable and now competently aware, being fully informed not only by the woman but by the prosecuting attorney that these CPS workers are in violation of the law, statutes, codes, and provisions for which they are bound by, and not reporting it, not taking disciplinary action against these people, not summoning them to court and holding them accountable for what they're doing. So back to spirituality and how powerful your writs can be when you start using that good book. You see, I have the right to travel from point A to point B because I have dominion. My yes be yes and my nay be nay. And if anybody here tell me differently, please stand forward. Not one of you can because you see you exhibit the same dominion that I have. The only difference between you and I is I know that I have dominion over it. How? It tells me right there in Genesis. I have dominion over the uh, land. I have dominion over the air and the fowl within it. And I have dominion over the fish in the sea, water. I have dominion while I'm here. Comes with great responsibility, but I have it, ultimately. Now to show you where they do not have dominion is nowhere in that book does it tell me 
that a standing army identified as the Policia, or police, will have dominion over the land. Nowhere does it tell me corporations will run the world in the absence of the Creator. So where's their juxtaposition? How are they tying you up? How are they binding you up? They usurped power not given to them by the Most High. They are just your fellow man, hiding under the guise of a title, purporting to you through the news media that what they are doing is a justified position in the name of safety. Ladies and gentlemen, that's thought policing. You've had a beer, I pulled you over, you blew a point eight. Sorry to say this, Frank. Gotta take you in, buddy. Well, what for? Well, you're DUI. Hmm. Who did you save? Well, I don't know. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, who are you saving right now? Who is the potential injured party? I mean, because we're thought policing at this point, and because I blow a .08, you feel that I may not be good enough to be on the highways, byways, freeways, and passages. But at the same time, you should also have to prove that there is some sort of future victim, right? Now, I don't advocate drinking and driving at all, actually. I, I, I despise it because people are ignorant and they do take other people's lives and that does affect other families. But the, in all reality, I can't spank my dog and rub his nose in a pile of shit in the living room floor if my dog hasn't shit in the living room floor. Otherwise, I'm abusing my authority. I'm causing harm, injury, damage, and loss to my dog, right? That disciplinary action is unwarranted. It's in vain. It's despicable. I only express these simplistic theories and stories to help your mind evolve to the reality of what you've been subjected to for your mind has been polluted and bastardized to believe a certain way that what they are doing is just, right, and noble. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a very simplistic man. When you do something in front of me, when you do a thing, it is either right or it is wrong. There is no in-between. There are no gray areas. You either stole a thing or you didn't steal a thing. Which was it? Because everything boils down to trespass. If I don't have permission to walk across your yard, then I have trespassed. If I didn't have permission to enter into your car, I trespass. And that's, that's a breach of your privacy. That's a breach of so, on, on so many levels of things that are just innately wrong, right? What this judge, the scoundrel, is doing from the bench is unjustly enriching himself because he has proprietary gain and interest, monetary value that he will grow and gain by assisting and having sympathy for the corporation known as CPS. How in good conscience could you ever take children from a mother where there are nobody to testify as to any alleged incident that has gone wrong, aside from a CPS agent who wasn't there and is speaking at best third hand. No first hand knowledge, no testimony, no nothing. I'm gonna side and sympathize with the corporation, even when the prosecuting attorney is, is there talking about all the breaches that CPS did and showing and supporting it with the statutes, codes, and provisions there to be abiding by. We have a major, major problem, ladies and gentlemen. But the problem doesn't actually start with the system. The problem starts with you. And until you get that figured out, the problem will always be you. So how do we change it? How do we pull out of this fog that we've seemed to have encapsulated ourselves and have been mystified by? How do we get out of this blind complacency and, 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 and blind obedience. Most people will never get it 
until they're in the dire straits in the clutches of the court system. And they'll look back and go, man, I watched that guy, that, that crazy guy. Uh, what was his name? Oh, yeah, Derek. I watched that crazy guy talk about this stuff all the time, but I used to think he was full of shit. But here I am, and I, it's my day before the judge, and the judge is supposed to be honorable and noble and all-knowing and all-powerful, and he's supposed to be able to, to know the difference between right and wrong. And I'm just sure as pies, you know, flies gathered to shit that I'm going to be treated real good. I had to break it to you guys. It was never about right and wrong. It's always been about profitability. And it tells you in that good book, be wary of false prophets. And as I'm thinking, I once referenced the good book is also a banking manual. I'm sitting there thinking, as I often do, staring at the ceiling fan. And I go, son of a bitch, false prophets. The false gains, the ill-gotten gains, the damn unjust enrichment is the false prophets. Be wary of the false prophets. The false prophets gained. You see, when you can really start to read that book, when you can really start to analyze what's in it, it will show you how the entire system was designed. Now, where do we find our remedy, ladies and gentlemen? Earlier in the video here, I mentioned the Constitution, the First Amendment, the right to the freedom of speech, freedom of press, uh, the right to protest, and of course, the right to religion. You're gonna use that to your benefit because the Most High commands you to do so. Your job is to inform your fellow man of the true law. And there is no law higher than the Creator's law, none. Everything else is inferior. The Constitution was created and based upon the very fundamentals of Christianity, religion. Basic concepts between good and evil is what caused the Constitution to be written. The Bill of Rights does not articulate all of your rights. It doesn't do so. In fact, I don't think there's anybody that could write down all their rights. Because on a day-to-day -day basis, you exhibit new rights you have every day. You have the right to change the radio station. You have the right to urinate, defecate, masticate. You have the right to go fishing. You have the right to go hunting. You have the right to jump off a bridge if you want, even though it makes no logical sense. You have that right. Nobody can stop you. Absent of causing somebody else injury, nobody can stop you from doing what you want to do. Provided it doesn't harm anybody else. Provided that you're not trespassing. When you uh, start to see these things, you're going to start being able to make your writs. And I call them writs. And I would advise you all to write them by hand. Put your soul into it. Leave the impression on the paper. We could use these other forms such as uh, color. There's belief in the color. Purple for royalty. Gold is king's etiquette. Uh, red indicates and signifies blood. Blue for commercial. You can go all that route if you want. Um, it's yours. You're the creator. You're the author, which makes you what? The authority. Where do we get the word authority? From author. The author is always the authority. What the men and women in law enforcement, the judiciary, your politicians, what they all do is assume false names. Every last one of them operates underneath a name that is not theirs. So it's false and misleading representation. And under Title 18, 1001, they can be punished for it. They also are not registered with a DBA doing business as class three misdemeanor, I believe. They're guilty of that. They also are not registered with and compliant with the Foreign Registration Act of 1938. They're in violation of that. Jailable offense, finable offense. And yet they have the audacity to bring you into their mock courtroom and try and get you to engage in contract without providing you full disclosure of what they're doing. And because of our indoctrination, We've been trained to lay down to authority. Military personnel is the worst. That's why we see our cops the way they are today. 
But military is the worst. All they know how to do is follow orders. They've been broken down to such a magnitude that when they hear somebody that's got three stripes on their shoulder, by God, help to if third. They don't take the time to go, is what I'm actively involved in and engaged in right or wrong? So we lend to morality. What is morality? Morality lends to spirituality, which undoubtedly falls underneath the creator's law. See, I'm not there to argue the facts in a court. In fact, there are no facts in dispute, but I do have some questions before we move forward. Spiritually, is what you guys doing correct? And did you take an oath, so help you God? So isn't your first oath of allegiance to the highest power and creator from which all law derives from? You see if they can answer these questions. I bet they can, not with an honest face. When we see what they're doing to our fellow man and stealing from them, they're taking food literally off your table, not figuratively, literally, because they do nothing else productive in society. The only thing they know how to do is lie, loot, pander, and steal from people. They spend seven years going through a class that I would construe as nothing more than drama class in high school, learning how to argue, bicker, and fight like two teenage girls. It's ridiculous. Even when you present the facts in their face, they will lie and deny. How do you get justice in a system like that? because there's profit margins on the backside of that. So what else do we want from these impotent, incompetent rats? Well, I want their anti-bribery statement. I want them to swear to me under the pains and penalties of perjury. They're not on the take. They're not getting any benefits from the municipal corporation for which they're operating within. I want to make sure they're not getting any privy benefits or tax breaks uh, with the corporation they're working with or working for. I want to make sure that CPS isn't giving them any bribe money on the take. But look, let's face it, I don't answer questions, or I don't ask questions I don't already know the answer to. And so we look at CFR 302.34, we look at uh, USC 653.2, we look at all, all, of, all of these codes and statutes that prove without question that they're all receiving kickbacks and benefits. Now we've escalated the situation to human trafficking because it's for profit, it's for gain, monetarily. If you think I'm crazy, go out there and do your research. I can assure you that I'm not. But I can also attest and tell you how powerful that good book is. They cannot beat it. Let one man in here refute this good word that a trespass is a trespass. Nobody will argue that. Absent a contract, there, there can be no, no decision made. Is there a contract between me and CPS? I'll wait. Who's going to come forward and say, yeah, I informed Derek that we were going to contract, and he agreed uh, that in, in any fashion or uh, sense that if he so much as uh, violated the ends of the contract, we would be able to come in here and rob him 60% of his income. And he, he was just like, yeah, that's great. That's, that's fantastic. I'll sign up for that. Oh, oh, and judge, he never did ask what, what the benefits for him were. Um, and quite frankly, I, I don't really know that there are any benefits for Derek. But it, nevertheless, I was there, he signed that contract. That's how stupid this guy is. No benefits for himself, and, and he agreed that we could take 60% of his income. Hmm. Who would do that? Nobody. How are you guys getting taken in the courts like this? I don't get it. Like I said, the first problem is us, you, me, not getting learned, not standing up for what's right, not doing equity. We are the law. We are also the media. We're bringing you the facts, the evidence that support it. You'll never see this stuff on Fox, CNN, and anything that you are seeing on there is because they want you to see it. MK Ultra is not a joke, it's reality. Let me show it to you. 
When they first created the television, it was called television programming. What was it? There was a, there was a show I used to watch when I was a little tiny kid. Uh, PB something or other, and it was called television programming. It was public broadcast system television programming, and they blatantly just said it right out to you in, in front. I think it was Reading Rainbow or something like that, and uh, they, they blatantly would tell you this is public broadcasting television programming for your viewing pleasure. What are they doing? They're desensitizing you. They're 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 getting you to stray away from the truth that they fear. Because once you wake up truly to what's going on, you can combat this on every level using the Bible, using that good book, the book of trust. And you can absolutely decimate them. I'm going to go into a courtroom with this gal, and I'm going to end up filing claims against this judge when I see him act out of order. And he's acting, right? So it's not judge whatever his name is. It will be his first, his middle, and his last name, and I will be affixing charges to him for his breach of contract, his gross negligence, which equates to fraud. I will slam Title 18 all over his ass. Why? Because I am the law, and you are too. Everybody wants to cry about their politicians being crooked and their cops being crooked. And who do we go to? And how do we, how do we get them in trouble? And how do we remove them from our society so we can be at peace? Well, first you have to know the law. How do you enforce something you don't know whether it's right or wrong? So I tell you to go read that good book because ultimately that is the law. Title 18 isn't the law. But it's something they're bound by because they're employees. There are servants. And they're bound by these. And if the sheriff won't arrest the damn judge, I'll bulldog the son of a bitch. I don't have a problem doing it. You're under arrest for violating this woman's unalienable rights. And anybody else involved in it is involved in a conspiracy against her. And I'm certain that I will find... The profits that you have stolen by utilizing the IRS to expose your Ponzi scheme, human trafficking, theft by taking. Share this with your friends and family. Think about it. Just think about the reality of the situation that you're in right now. We're in a world where the few control the masses by the manipulation of the mind. And anytime something's about to historically change for the benefit of the people, we have some disastrous boogeyman that comes over and blows up a building or farts in the wrong direction. And poof! Oh, we gotta be mad, madder than a hornet and get behind our government because by God, there's a boogeyman out there. Ain't no damn boogeyman coming to get you. I promise you that. Not unless you speak out like me and the many others that are starting to stand up. We've got some real things to worry about. Look at Julian Assange. Guilty of nothing wrong. He's been sued 500 times, and the man has won all 500 cases. He's never lost a damn case, and they were suing him for bringing out false allegations against people. And they took it personal, and they went like ignorant fools and tried to sue him, even though they knew they had done exactly what he had reported on. But you never hear about that in the news, do you? Chelsea Manning, irrespective of whether sex change, no sex change, gay, straight, black, white, pink, yellow, green, makes no difference to me, exposed the fact that innocent men and women were being gunned down in Apache helicopters for, for sport, for fun, had nothing to do with security, had absolutely jack dick to do with your freedom and liberty. Edward Snowden exposes to the world the world that the NSA is collecting every bit of fucking data from the time you flush the toilet to the time you lay your head to bed on you violating your right to privacy, absent due process of law, and he's exiled from the country. These people I speak of are heroes. They're not, they're not traitors. They're not treasonous rat bastards. Your treasonous rat bastards are sitting in political positions making the people that are telling the truth appear to be traitors. But in all actuality is, the only thing they're doing is exposing the corrupt business that these people are profiting from. All while being gainfully employed by you, the people, to be their loyal servants. Yet Nancy Pelosi wants to 
investigate Donald Trump's tax return. And I say to you, Nancy Pelosi, I want to see how you come up 175 million strong, making 106 to 136 thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to, There's a quid pro quo here, baby. I. I personally don't give a shit about Trump's taxes. I want to see the rest of you lying, looting, pandering pieces of shit's books. But you'll never get the uh, divine pleasure of seeing that, ladies and gentlemen. You're never gonna, you're never gonna see that. But it's blatantly right in your face. How does she get 176 million dollars, only making 103 to 136 thousand a year? Donald Trump, before he got into office, was a damn billionaire. I'm not saying he didn't lie, cheat, steal to get there. Because I find that most people that are extraordinarily successful are con men and women. Most of them. Not all of them, but most of them. Some of them actually have good business practices, morals, ethics. But you'll find most often that people that are successful had to cheat, lie, and steal to get there. When we think about society as a whole, and I don't even like the word society because after gaining all this knowledge, I realize there are multiple societies throughout the world. You could never call it a single society for the Bar Association thinks that they're privy and they are first class citizens and everybody else is below them and a lower class citizen, which would make you a subject. And yet everybody that sits in, in political offices right now, for the most part in the legislative branch, you can't even get in the legislative branch unless you're a lawyer. These are the people that dictate what you can and can't do, allegedly. Tell you you can't do cocaine and every last one of them doesn't want to take a piss test. Tell you you have to take a piss test to get a job to ensure that we can keep the insurance margins low, but yet none of them are willing to subject themselves. The first thing you do when you ask them a question, the first thing they do is, I plead the fifth. You plead the fifth all of a sudden, that's suspicious. You're guilty of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, we made these very uh, provisions just so you wouldn't, you know, if, it, it, just in the fact if you were guilty, you would say these things. Mm -hmm. You see all these people going to jail, Roger Stone. The truth of the matter is all of them belong in jail for what they've done to you. You are a slave until you have an ascension of the mind. You don't believe me? Try and keep your whole paycheck. Try to go down the highway without flying their flag, their license plate, and their little fancy sticker. Now, I once had a gal at a courthouse tell me, oh, you don't think you have to pay uh, for your registration? Why would I? Well, how, do, how are we going to pay for the highways? I laughed. I pay a tax every time I buy fuel. I tend to drive pretty good-sized automobiles that uh, require and consume quite a bit of fuel more than the average people's uh, automobiles. And so by right, I actually pay more taxes and have a little more right to that highway. If we're gonna base it upon how much monetary substance I provide to the highways, freeways and byways. Your sales tax on your fuel goes to your road. Your sales tax on your tires goes to your road, but nobody tells you that. Now, how are you going to tell me I can't travel down the road not flying your damn flag when I paid for the road? With my fuel consumption. By paying for the fuel. Does that seem like freedom? See, getting your plate is just a fancy way of being able to unleash the hellhounds, the revenue generators identified as cops, police officers. It's just a way for them to be able to run you so they can justify pulling you over. Oh, he's not... Oh, that's a Florida plate. Yeah, there's a lot of drugs coming from that place and they're coming up here because this is a drug place. That's a Florida plate. We're going to stop that one. See, if nobody had any plates, they'd never have a clue where anybody was from, ever. And you would actually have to cause harm, injury, damage, or loss in order to be stopped. Because just merely traveling down the road with everybody else without marked identified vehicles for their convenience to fleece you, nobody would be getting stopped. Absent a crime. Absent actually doing something wrong. Now you're traveling at night, it's midnight. The first thing they're gonna think is, oh yeah, well anything after 10 o'clock is gonna be a DUI. We always gotta escalate it to a DUI. Everybody is guilty of something. That's the belief these uh, professional paranoids have. We're watching them gun down innocent men, women, and children, and none of them are being prosecuted for it. 
That's a totalitarian dictatorship if I've ever fucking seen one. Judge, jury, and executioner on the side of the road, wielding a badge with less than an 80% IQ, pointing a gun at an innocent man and woman and executing them on the spot. Because I was so scared. Oh my God, my dainty little mind, I just couldn't handle it. He sneezed, the instant reaction of me with muscle memory was just a, put a whole damn clip in him. When are you people gonna wake up? Are you gonna see what's truly transpiring and stand up and do something? Going down to Washington DC changes nothing. It's its own private area. It's its own sovereign nation. Going there and bitching does nothing. You know how you remove Washington DC from your back pocket? It starts at your lower court municipal areas. It starts in your counties. You need to go to your county treasurer and tell her you're removing your land plot from the tax, from the property tax. Ask her for the documentation so you can remove yourself from the land property tax because you no longer wish to voluntarily participate in their horse shit. Don't believe me? Go try it. See what happens. Report back to me. I'll help you do it. It's not that big of a deal. Because if they lie and try and hide it from you and try and deny you the fact that you can take your property off their damn land registry that burdens you with a voluntary tax so you're essentially renting your property, then you can sue them for millions of dollars. Millions. And you'll get it. You'll win it. No questions asked. And the thing is, once you win it, what do you think everybody else in your county is going to do? Oh, Angie, I see you've got a nice lump sum of uh, $260,000 and it only took you about three weeks to prove your case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How'd you do that? Before long, little Susie's going to have about 60 people sitting in her front yard going, we don't want to pay our land tax either. The problem is none of you guys realize that your land tax, your property tax, all these taxes don't go where you think they go. Never have and they never will. Mm -hmm. Hypothecate your credit from... The Social Security Administration numbers and the birth certificate. They're hypothecating your credit all the time using securities instruments. A court case is never truly closed, ever. It's a monetary thing. 30 to 40 years, they've got all these bonds floating off your name. That's why I urge people never to sign anything mm -hmm. digitally. It is so easy to just take your digital signature and slap it on something else in the banking world, throw it through the rungs and keep racking up Loads of credit that you know nothing about. So back to the initial point, your affidavit and why it's so powerful. It's spiritual. It's based upon morality, the highest law of the land. You are there telling the truth. And nobody, no agent and agency can testify against you with firsthand knowledge and say that it's not true. And that's why it stands true in fact in law. Now, so often you'll have these ministerial administrators that don't even open your brief to look at it. You have to compel them to perform. Did you read this? For and on the official record, has anybody in this room today read my affidavit? No. Well, it was sub submitted 30 days ago, and 30 days ago I mailed it to each and every one of you, and none of you have read it. No. I'm great. And this case is closed because clearly in my affidavit I stated that if you didn't have a physical... Uh, injured party, man, woman, absent a contract or anything else, with injury, damage, harm, and loss, then we're at an estoppel and this case is closed. It's dismissed. It's done. If you can't rebut the affidavit, that gives you the grounds for the appeal on the higher court. But you don't even need to go to the higher court if you know what you're doing. You can shut it down in these lower bullshit courts. Because any order that the judge orders from that point on that you accept because you don't realize an order is an offer to contract, but let's just say you enter into that bogus contract, it's void from the beginning, in amnesio, for failure to disclose. They didn't disclose to you the fact that they're trying to contract with you, that all this is is a commercial endeavor to unjustly enrich themselves while fleecing you because you have no idea what's really going on. It's under the guise of justice and what's right and what's correct. So help them God. As soon as they walk in there, your creator has nothing to do with their operation. You see, in the good book, it tells you what they're doing. It tells you that you're going into a synagogue. 
that you're dealing with bankers and that they're there to fleece you. And what did he do? Jesus of Nazareth went down there and flipped over the money changers' tables for they smited the heavenly creator and extorted his people. They were using the tabernacles and the, and the synagogues to do sinister things to his people. And that's exactly what's happening in your courthouses today. You go down to any county, stand in the middle of the square, and you're going to see the plantation house where your masters are at. And those are just the house, the, the house masters. There's some other words I'd use, but I don't want to offend anybody. Those are the house masters, and they listen to the other house masters that are ultimately run by a bunch of people who seek to extort you and, and your energy and force you into slavery. Go stand at a courthouse and look around and notice that's, that's the big house. You want a plantation. Slavery never ended. You see, you go there to register your car, your babies, all the important things in your life, and you're led to believe that it's for your best interest, but in truth, that's so they can contract with you. Because absent a contract, you're self-governing. They have no business with you. That's why you need a fee schedule. That's why you need the affidavit. If you're gonna play in the commercial realm, I highly advise you to file a UCC-1. Understand the UCC-3s and what they're used for. You can throw a, 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 a judgment, you can render a judgment null and void on your own. You can expunge your own record. It don't cost you no 10 grand to do it. It's a UCC-1 and a UCC-3, baby, all day long. A termination. A debtor can terminate another debtor. Bang, boom, bang, it's done. You can also make the judge the liable party. You can make him the debtor, responsible for the debt. After all, he's the one that generated it. He's the one that went along with the shit show that the clerk created. You can hold these people accountable if you know what you're doing. Gain the law. But the easiest way to do it is by using the good book. Use the good book. Woe unto you lawyers, for you lay fellow, for you lay burdens upon your brother, yet ye yourself not touch. What's one of the uh, laws that we're not supposed to do? Oh, that's right. We're not supposed to bear false witness against our brothers and sisters. Another thing we're not supposed to do, trespass. It's right there in the good book. It's another thing we're not supposed to do, lie. Hmm. Commit adultery, steal, right? These are all basic fundamental principles of law that have give, been given to us and granted to us by the Most High. They're common sense, they're common law. It's the highest law on the land. It cannot be absconded from. It's so blatantly in your face, you can do nothing but prevail as long as you have the knowledge and stand correct and stay on your square. Quit arguing the minor issues. Oh, well, Susie said this. What do you have to say about that? That's not the point. I don't care what Susie said. You have my damn offspring. You've stolen my offspring. You facilitated these jack wagons and jackals and stealing my offspring for unjust enrichment to steal, to, to, to enrich yourself. And at the same time, I've incurred an injury from each and every one of you conspiring against me in your criminal activity to human traffic. That's the issue at this court. I don't want to hear that. I know you don't want to hear that. Nobody wants to hear they're a damn criminal. Why don't you think they want cameras in the courtroom? Ladies and gentlemen, why? Ask yourself this. Why can we not bring audio, visual, recording devices in the courtroom? Because only freaking thieves don't want to be recorded. Because they're walking, talking contradictions. And they know that if the vast majority of the people could actually see what happens in their their three-ring shit show behind closed doors, there isn't one American that wouldn't run them out of the country t tomorrow. I've lived it. I've seen it firsthand. I watched a judge one time contradict herself three times. I put her on the spot. I said, now, hear me, Ken. You're either grossly incompetent or you're a pathological liar. There's some other scenarios that may be plausible. You could be under the influence of alcohol. You could be under the influence of drugs. Then again, in today's society, you might be susceptible to being on uh, some form of medication that would alter your perception. So at this point, because you've told me three different fabrications, you're either going to suggest, uh, subject yourself to a urine analysis uh, test and a drug and alcohol uh, screening, or you're going to remove yourself from the frickin' bench because at this point, I've just found you not competent to even sit where you're sitting.
You've lied to me three times for it on the official record, and I won't be lied to again. She opens her mouth and lies to me again. I said, young lady, those are your options. You know, piss in a cup today and prove that you're not under the influence of drugs, alcohol, or anything else that would be possibly screwing with your ability to make your decisions competently. She didn't say a thing. Turned ghost white. Walked out. You see how much authority you have when you really pay attention to what's going on? When you put the onus of probandee back on them, when you put them on the spot, who are you to judge me? Let he who has not sinned cast the first stone. A lot of these judges and lawyers put people in jail for drugs, and yet I, walk, I watch some of these lawyers walk around dropping cocaine, rocks of cocaine out of their damn nose. I've been in their office and literally seen cocaine fall on a desk, going, well, what the hell is going on here? And you're a lawyer? I mean, you, you prosecute people for this shit, right? I mean, you try and help them out. You know, you were a prosecutor at one point. You prosecuted for drugs. What the hell's falling out of your nose? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know. But, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Right? Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a bunch of narcissistic, cynical assholes lording over you. And you don't do anything about it because you just don't have the knowledge. And I'm trying to help you out. You got to know who you are first. You got to speak with authority and volume. And you've got at some points have to be a little belligerent. I'm not talking about going in there and hanging them from a rope, which most of them belong swinging from trees. Make no doubt about it. The only reason you're not seeing any difference in Washington, D.C. right now is because when Hillary Clinton falls, she's already promised and guaranteed she's taking everybody with her. And she ain't bullshit, ladies and gentlemen. She was a smart, conniving, stunning, you know what, C-U-N-T. She, would, she knew what she was doing when she did it and why. It's called leverage. Smart business people that are con artists do that kind of shit to people. And it's rampant within Hollywood and it's rampant within DC. So whether they got pictures of them diddling little boys and little girls or cheating on their wives or taking money from big corporations to push bills through that would piss off people, forced vaccination, whatever. There's so much dirt on all those lying, looting, pandering pieces of shit. You're never going to see the house of cards fall because when one goes down, they literally will all go down. And it might be to such a magnitude that it starts a civil war to the likes of which nobody has ever seen in this lifetime. I don't think a foreign country would in invade the United States of America with the American people being that pissed off going after the politicians. I just don't, I can't see it. I can't fathom it. But with war comes mass confusion, which leads to mass manipulation. So again, I don't advocate that. But what I do advocate is having an ascension of the mind becoming brilliant, extraordinarily brilliant, communicating with your fellow man within your community because the change happens minutely in the area that you inhabit. That's how you make the change. That's how you uplift your community. And quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, that is how you're going to uplift and revolutionize the concept of the United States of America. With that, I bid you a great morning. I hope this helped you out a little bit. Remember, your affidavits are powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Take no shit from no one because a bunch of men and women died, allegedly, so you could be free. Don't take it for advantage or for granted.